Thank you. Let's have our seat. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor on behalf of the President, Nigeria Association for Engineering, Geology and Environment, Dr. Waliu Kayade Adeolu, and the Vice President, International Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment for the Africa region, Professor Tamunuene Kingdom Abam, to specially welcome you to this all important occasion which marks a definite epoch in the annals of history of the Nigerian Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment. We are all aware of the different issues facing us, perhaps when it comes to infrastructural development. Today, the building collapses. Tomorrow, the road is failing. And all those issues we have decided to bring to the fore. This conference is in dual mode as we are hosting Africa and we are hosting Nigeria. Please let's give ourselves a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this conference is engineering geology imperative for infrastructural development and sustainability of cities in Africa. Permit me, with your kind permission, to please introduce some of our dignitaries and bring some of them to the podium. I am so delighted and happy to invite to the high table the chairman of today's event, who is none other than a past president of the Nigerian Association for Engineering Geology, a past president of the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society, Sir Professor Clifford Songo Teme, F. Naige, FNMGS. In a very special way, please permit me to bring to the podium the president of the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society, Alabo Charles C.A. C.D. Charles, FNMGS, F. Naige, who is unavoidably absent, but represented by none other than the representative of the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society on the board of the PTI, is the chairman of the Fundraising and Government Liaison Committee of this conference. We refer to him as King of the Boys. His friends call him Luffy. I'm introducing none other than Prince Benga Lufa Deju, F. Naige, FNMGS, FNAH, F. Napi. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to bring those two personalities first before I bring these two personalities to join them. These fellows of our society, these giants of our society, have contributed in no small way to the growth and development of Naege. They are indeed the ones who we can regard as the hosts of this conference. Permit me to bring and introduce to you the president of the Nigerian Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment, Dr. Waliu Kayode Adeolu F. Naige. You can see that Naige is youthful. You can see our president. That is a standard champion. You are welcome, sir. Permit me 
to also introduce a mentor, a teacher, someone who finds it easy to provide his shoulders as long part for the young, is the past president of Naege, is the current vice president, Africa region of the IAEG, Professor Tamunwene Kingdom Abam, FNMGS F Naege. Congratulations, sir, for all you do. We are indeed very happy and proud to be associated with you. You are most welcome, sir. As you are aware, this program is not just about Nigeria. We are hosting Africa. And fortunately for us, in our midst, we have a delegation from South Africa. And because of that, I'm going to bring someone who is a chief engineering geologist, a project leader in the Council of Geosciences of South Africa, Sifiso Ngubelanga. Sifiso, please come forward. You are most welcome. Yesterday, Sifiso had a taste of Eba and a four Rio. And I'm sure he has is going to have fond memories of our country. You are welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I knew that um, the state of aquatic splendor was not going to disappoint. I also knew that in a state where you have an achiever, a distinguished personality, someone with suave and the right carriage, someone who walks with measured steps, someone who is a former banker, an icon, a three-time commissioner, I knew they were not going to disappoint us. A round of applause for that person I'm about to introduce. It's not easy to be a great aquakite. It's not easy to be an alumnus of the Lagos Business School. It's also not easy to be an alumnus of the London School of Business. And when you had the Harvard Kennedy School of Government as part of the schools this personality attended, then you know the kind of person I am introducing. No wonder we can feel his impact in governance. We can see the rail project. We can see other infrastructural projects going on. This fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development is none other than His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwo Olu. My governor, your governor, our governor deserves more than that. Despite the fact that there's a summit, the Aigwati summit, taking place right now at the Eco Hotels and Suits, the Lagos State Government feels that this conference is very important. And hence, we have in our midst another distinguished personality who is representing the governor. He is by no means a man of timber and caliber, as we call it. Someone who can hold his own at any time. He is the Honorable Commissioner, Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, Engineer Tayo Bangboshe Martins. You are most welcome, sir. A round of applause, please. Thank you very much, sir. We are so happy to have you here. Please let our governor, His Excellency, know that we appreciate him immensely. We are full of gratitude. God bless you plenty, sir. 
Without much further ado, please permit me to invite the President of the Nigerian Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment, Dr. Waliu Kayode Adeolu, to give the welcome address. Dr. Kayode Adeolu. His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushala Sonwolu, ably represented by the Commissioner of Fiscal Planning, very distinguished colleagues, members of the ITBU, friends of Naege, friends of AEG, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the National Executive Council of the Nigerian Association for the Engineering, Geology and the Environment, I welcome you all to Lagos, the Commercial Nerve Center of Nigeria, for the seventh annual International Conference of Naege, which also doubles as the third African Regional Congress of AEG. May I also acknowledge the presence of the dignitaries from around the world, the African region, and the host, Nigeria. Two numerals to single out today. You are all warm, warmly welcome and well received to this notable AEG African Regional Congress and Naege Conference. Lagos 2022. Please permit me to know that this event is very significant because Lagos, being the coastal commercial nerve center and former capital city of Nigeria, is at its most critical time in terms of engineering, geology, and the environmental sustainability. Having witnessed building collapse at a rate of two in every three months in the recent past. There is also a general debt of infrastructure for properly functioning cities in Nigeria and Africa. The theme of this conference and Congress, Engineering Geology, Imperative for Infrastructural Development and Sustainability of Cities in Africa, with the following sub-themes. Building Collapse, the nexus between geology foundation suitability and structural stability. Geohazard, infrastructural stability and environmental sustainability. Advances and innovation in soil and rock characterizations. Geophysics in subsurface engineering, geological mapping and characterization. Engineering geological mapping for sustainable infrastructure. These sub teams is ve they are very apt in view of the challenges confronting African cities that are witnessing a surge in rural and urban migration. Africa's regional neotectonism and seismology are also generating geological hazard, begging for earthquake engineering geological competencies and the need for codification of seismic geotechnical investigations, geostructural designs and construction of earthquake resistance infrastructure for African cities. Global temperature trends and predictions also depict an unabated rise in the next decade, indicating the challenge global carbon dioxide management and the climate change pose to ground engineering and geotechnical strategies for environmental sustainability in our world's serene earth. Low-lying coastal cities at risk of extinction from the rising sea level, from flooding, from salinization of the groundwater aquifer. They underscore the need for climate change adaption. Mitigation strategies and sustainable geotechnical practices for the sustainability of cities in Africa and the globe at large. This AEG Congress and Niger International Convocation of Intellectuals and Experts looks forward to coming up with geological engineering solutions for sustainable human habitation and occupancy in cities in these contemporary times. In a bit of progress, the Niger National Executive Council would like to note 
that our efforts at a trenching engineering geological practice in Nigeria are receiving a boost with recent advocacy we have embarked upon. Consequently, the nation's national building code and its domestication in Lagos are being reviewed. This is directed as stemming the incessant building collapse, the loss of irreparable human resources and material properties, and the associated environmental degradation. Naege is playing a leading role in this process. We also wish to use this medium to remind our Naege members about our project engineering geological mapping of cities. And we call on all to support the idea with geo-referenced and reliable geotechnical data towards the realization of this goal for urban planning and development. Once again, we welcome you all to Lagos 2022. Enjoy the Congress. Eko Nibajao. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm sure you agree with me that my president deserves a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to bring forward to present his speech. That is the Vice President Africa of the International Station for Engineering, Geology and the Environment, who is also a past president of the Nigerian Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment, Professor Tamunene Kingdom Abam, FNMGS F. Naige. His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, the Chairman of this occasion, distinguished members from the high table, my colleagues and friends, there are many here today whose presence ought to be personally acknowledged, but please permit me to, on behalf of the International Association for Engineering Geology and the Environment, welcome you all with great pleasure to this joint conference. It gladdens my heart to see all our members and others with broad interest in engineering and environmental geology and geotechnics and of course, friends of the Nigerian Association for Engineering Geology seated in this hall. The International Association for Engineering Geology and the Environment has evolved steadily since its establishment more than 50 years ago. Currently, IEG has six regional structure with eight vice presidents of which Africa is one. The Africa region with three national groups has also come of come of age. A fourth national group, the Cameroonian national group, is almost due for batting, and I believe its founding coordinator would be at this conference. We are now in the third regional congress and forging stronger by the day. These conferences have also served as avenues to increase public awareness on the important roles of engineering geology in development and public safety through our leadership, advocacy, and applied researches in engineering geology and the environment. We believe that our members have a responsibility to assume stewardship over their fields of expertise. Membership of the association has also expanded. So also has our participation in the Nigerian mining and geosciences, as well as in the International Association for Engineering Geology and Environment Activities. Africa today has been identified as a region with the most improvement in membership. NIAC's strength in AEG as well as in NMGS is shown by our, by our numbers and quality of representation. We will continue to strive to make the association even more exciting. The last few years has seen AEG and Niagara members play dominant roles in the infrastructure sector. I'm optimistic that in no distant time, AEG, Niagara, and NMGS will work closely with government, 
to advise decision makers and to shape opinions and to serve as a major force in the development of infrastructure in the coming years. We are privileged to have strong presence in the new generation of engineering and environmental geologists, that is the young engineering geologists. I challenge the young engineering geologists to rally around the Niger president and the incoming AEG vice president and ensure the continuous upward trajectory of AEG as well as NIEG. It gladdens me that the efforts of this class of members are already yielding fruits, even at the international level. Lastly, I would like to seize the opportunity to formally inform our members of the emergence of Professor Moshrud Tijani as the incoming vice IAC Vice President, Africa, and solicit your continued support in his task of promoting engineering geology and the environment and environmental geology around Africa. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the Vice President, Africa Region of the International Association for Engineering Geology and the Environment, Professor TKS Abam. Thank you very much, sir. I'd like to invite the chairman of today's event, our past president, our father, our teacher, our mentor, Sir Professor Clifford Sonu Teme, FNIG, FNMGS, to give the chairman's remarks. Our governor's representative. Vice President AIG Africa, President of NMTS and Chairman of PTI Committee, our young, ever ready President of NIG, Madam, I greet you. And then my friend from South Africa, please tell them we are coming to Botswana here tomorrow. I've been there, it's a wonderful place. And I don't mind coming again, passing through South Africa to Boston, like I did last time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy today that Niger has come of age. Niger has come of age. We're going to have about building Kalan's lecture today. But let me tell you one thing. Without the engineering geologist, there will be no end to building Kalan's in Nigeria. No end. But we are come on age, and we are come on the stage, and I promise you, there will be no building collapse again in Nigeria. I'll give you an example. In my state of River State, up to six years ago, buildings were collapsing every year. The last one was so bad that there was a punch failure, what they call print failure. Don't worry, when I give my talk, I'll tell you what is punch failure. The old building, three story building, went down. People are still trapped there, six years ago. So when that happened, we said, no, not enough. Then I called the then chairman of Nike and the then chairman of Nigerian Association, Nigerian Digital Association, then Professor uh, Samuel Ejizi, put their heads together, we went and met the governor, Odiri. He said, sir, I want to put an end to that university. Since then to now, every building, one story and above, this mandatory and compulsory must be solid. Don't be surprised, those of us in Puerto Rico have done some of us, 400 and something jobs, some 300 and something jobs. Some of them have done more than that. Don't be surprised that those of us in Puerto Rico are doing a lot, but we have mandatory solid income for every building that's one solid and above. I appeal to Lego State, please tell our excellency, through you, that that should take place in Lagos. By the time we do that in Lagos, I assure you, building collapse will be reduced drastically, if not reduced finally. So on this note, I welcome all of you to this gathering. Despite the young geologists who are here, young engineering geologists from the schools, all of you are practitioners. Those who are coming to the conference for the first time in their life, this is what international conference looks like. And I assure you, you will be pleased to come once again. This is a unique occasion for us to showcase to the, the world that we are a part and parcel of the stability of buildings in Nigeria. If all of us can listen to the lectures in this, this 
conference and I dare speak to them, my governor from Lagos. Again, I said, send a prison to him. And you send whatever I will do to him. That would be personal involvement of Nike individuals. Pretty collapse with this. Welcome again to this unique opportunity of having this beautiful conference. I must confess, this is one of the best venues I've seen. It's even better than the one we had in California, in San Francisco. In the agree with me. So I thank Lagos chapter. Lagos is a center of excellence. They always excel it whenever they host. When they host them, just it's something else. Now they're hosting Nike, it's something else. So let's give a round of applause to Lagos. So I welcome all of you. Please, please attentively to every lecture here. You won't regret it. And I'm sure the younger ones will all leave petroleum and others to come and join us. We are the link to stability in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Distinguished Sir Professor Clifford Temen. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, sir. Permit me to let you know, sir, that we have rocks which weather into soils. The process of weathering of rocks is a process understood by the geoscientists. The materials we use for construction works are, in most cases, gotten from the rocks. And I can share experiences. We're talking about cement. When you talk about cement, talk about limestone. We all know limestone is a chemically active rock. If you cite a building on a place where the base is limestone. You must be prepared for jointing. At the same time, if you want to site a landfill site on a material like limestone, you know because it's a chemically active rock, when it comes in contact with water, there's production of the acid, which breaks down the fabric. If you want to site a dam, sir, you cannot also put it on an unstable base because the foundation will collapse. With all this I am saying, I'm only trying to let you know, sir, that Lagos State needs to also key in to the fact that the geoscientists are perhaps the most important. The buildings will keep coming down if we don't take into cognizance expertise on foundation investigation for these structures. And I'm told, sir, that you have been in the vanguard for that. God bless you plenty. We want more. Please do it, and everything will be fine with Lagos State, our own state. A round of applause for His Excellency. With that short synopsis, permit me to bring here, the president and number one geoscientist in this country, the president of the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society, Alabo, C.D. Charles, FNMGS, F. Naige, who is ably represented by another distinguished personality who is the representative of the NMGS on the board of the DP PTI is also a fellow of Naige, a fellow of the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society, a fellow of the Nigerian Association of Petroleum Explorationists, a fellow of the Nigerian Association of Hydrogeologists, the king of the boys, Prince Benga Lufadeju. Thank you, my boy. Uh, our executive governor of Lagos State, ably represented by honorable commissioner of physical planning. 
chairman of the occasion, president of AIC, president of MAGE, madam, distinguished past president of MAGE, distinguished elders, ladies and gentlemen. This is addressed from the president of NMGS, Nigeria Mining and Geosciences Society, Alabo C.D. Charles, FNMGS, FNAEGE, FNIS, JP. Uh, Chief Alabo could not come, so he had to send his message to me to present it at this occasion. And I've looked at the message. I wanted to edit it, but as you know, our president is a man of letters. So I didn't say anything to remove. And as such, I'm going to read it as he has sent it to me. I hope you'll bear with me. It is my pleasure. When I say my, please know that it is Allah child that is talking, not, not, not Benga Lufadeju. So it is my pleasure and honor to deliver this at the beginning of the Third African Regional Congress of the International Association of Engineering, uh, Geology and the Environment, and also the Seventh Annual International Conference. The theme of the conference, Engineering Geology, Imperative for Infrastructural Development and Sustainability of cities in Africa is very apt and engaging in view of an ever-changing world. The knowledge of physical environments is important to urban development because properties of art materials, landscape, climate, and local hydrology affect urban growth. Understanding the physical properties and behavior of, of art materials may, for example, lead to one, the selection of better and safer construction sites, two, the conservation of natural resources essential for a city's development, and three, the preservation of aesthetic resources that enhance quality of urban life. Engineering geology in urban development can help to determine the physical properties of art materials and to locate the process of economic value from which the cities in Africa can benefit. Costly repairs and maintenance can also be greatly minimized and expensive construction may be avoided with knowledge of engineering geology. Even cost savings can be greatly achieved if natural resources are located at the planning stage and if properly managed will enhance sustainable urban development. Generally, engineering geosciences provide a systematic knowledge of construction materials and their occurrence, formation, durability, strength, strength hardness, and uses. It is envisaged that for safer cities, a detailed geological report should typically be prepared with accompanying maps and sections. The detailed geological report should contain critical geoscience information such as rock, soil types, their bearing capacities, fault lines, among others, which are invaluable for urban infrastructural development. The lack of this critical input has contributed in stifling the growth of our cities and also led to catastrophic cases of failure and collapse of engineering structures in urban centers. It is good to know that the consequences of non-integration of geosciences fully in the development of engineering structures in cities is becoming more obvious in our nation and indeed our continent. The spate of building collapse is becoming increasingly alarming, drawing concern from the government and other stakeholders. Several factors have been fingered as the causes of building collapse, but far the most important 
is the lack of professional supervision in determination of the foundation characteristics and effective supervision of the entire city development process. To help stem this tide, it has been suggested that government at all levels must establish a functional engineering geological units for pre-construction investigations of projects. Also, engineering geological investigation should always precede city development projects like transport, infrastructure, buildings, excavations, activities, and so on. Only practicing and duly registered professionals should endorse engineering, geological, or soil investigators' reports for better and safer city development. Regulatory bodies should be empowered to enforce the laws with relevant guidelines and sanctions. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with a current world population of shy of about 80 billion people, the world is becoming a place in which human populations are getting more crowded, more consuming, more polluting, more po connected, and in many ways less diverse than at any time in history. It is imperative that for women to thrive in a sustainable way in our planet, we must learn from our mistakes and successes by improving on our interaction with the environment. We must continue to address critical development issues of our country and our continent, including climate change and its effect on more than just the global temperatures. Engineering geologists particularly have an obligation to future generations in providing safe and sustainable structure for our cities while ensuring minimal environmental impact. As professionals, we must aim at providing sustainable geosciences information for urban managers and policy makers, including national representatives, federal and state agencies, industry, academia, and other stakeholders in the sector. Nationally, NIGE can continue to play leading roles in these innovative efforts in infrastructural development of our cities. The NMGS will continue to offer support to NIGE as they drive geosciences innovation under the umbrella of our great society. Finally, I want to thank you all, distinguished guests and professionals, as I congratulate the AIG on the hosting of the Third African Regional Congress and President of NIAGE, the youthful uh, Dr. Adeolu, the, and the executive and the entire membership for the great work they are doing. I also congratulate the immediate past president of NIGE, Professor M. N. Tijani, on his election as Vice President Africa of AEG. I wish you all a wonderful and rewarding conference experience. Thank you. Alabo, C teachers, FNMGS, FNIS, JP, 31st president of NMGS. Thank you and God bless you. I hereby hand over the speech to the president of NIAGE, Dr. Adeolu. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the number one geoscientist in the country. Olowora, area of Lagos. Magodo, area of Lagos. Mudslide. Soil types. These are places where issues exist. And the geoscientists must be part of what is going on. Or else. And I know His Excellency understands more than what I have said. Your Excellency, thank you for all you are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you earlier that we are hosting Africa. So this is not just about Nigeria. And hence, we're going to listen to a goodwill message 
from the Project Leader Council for Geosciences of South Africa, Sifiso Ungubelanga. Sifiso, please come and say something. Good real message. Thank you, President Karek. Um, greetings to the governor of the state of Lagos. Uh, greetings to uh, the dignitaries in the front and various uh, guests who are gathered here for this beautiful conference. Um, I'm from the Council of Social Sciences, South Africa. Uh, my name is Sergio Gomelana. I'm the chief engineer in Jerusalem today. Um, under the section called Infrastructure and Land Use. We are really very, very uh, honored and happy to be here uh, to share a message and, and also take some learnings from Af Af our African brothers, uh, our fellow professionals from Africa, just to see exactly how are you guys doing this this side. Um, and as well, also, uh, we'd like to share some of the things that we are also doing on that side, uh, the kind of, of advancements that, that we are getting into uh, when it comes to scientists. However, the message that I would like to give is a very short message to say, um, as scientists, I think there's a space that we have uh, deserted for a very long time um, by thinking that perhaps the science or the engineering that we're doing is enough. Um, I just want to say, I think all of us, let's just take a back seat and think a little bit as to why are we doing science, why are we doing engineering. We're doing that so as to make an impact into the society. And that impact can only be made when our science has been incorporated into the processes and programs of our government. And how we can do that, that is by making sure that the science that we do does not only end up in the, in the publications, in the beautiful scientific publications, but that science that we do, it should ultimately find an expression in the laws of the country. Because if that doesn't happen, then it means the science that we do, it will remain in the journals. And I'm sure all of us as scientists, that is not what we want. What we want is to make an impact, a positive impact in the society. And by doing that, or by integrating the science into the law or the laws that governs the building industry in the, South in, in the country, then by so doing, then we'll be achieving the ultimate goal that we wished for, which is to make sure that we will have an impact uh, in our building society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sifiso. I can tell you for, sh for the truth that Sifiso and the South African delegation at a bar and pounded yam yesterday night and hence we have inducted them to the Nigerian culture. A round of applause for the South African delegation. The iron rod that we use for construction works is from iron ore. We understand all the processes that have brought that out. We also understand that for concrete, the different rock aggregates and fragments are from different rock types. Despite the fact that they call them all aggregates, we know that there's a difference between the rocks that are foliated, the rocks that have cleavages and joints. The geologists, the geoscientists, you cannot do without them when it comes to sustainable infrastructure. That is the way to go. A round of applause for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to bring forward for the final goodwill message, the immediate past director of technical services of the hydrocarbon pollution remediation project Professor P. D. Shekolo 
of the Federal Ministry of Environment. Professor Shikulu, sir. The, the Your Excellency, the Governor of um, Rivers uh, of um, Lagos State, <laughs> uh, Mr. Babadide Sawalu, the Chairman of um, this important conference, Professor Clifford Temi, and the other distinguished members of the high table and colleagues, good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to bring this message from the Honorable Minister of Environment, Barrister Mohammed Abdullahi, who is unavoidably absent because of some other engagements in Abuja. He has a very good message for this important conference because he believes that environment is the mother. Um, environment, as we know it, is dynamic. Today we have very strange um, environmental impacts in the north and in the middle belt. We have very heavy rainfalls and we have floods everywhere. And this is an evidence that the climate change is real and it is here with us. Um, basically, with these changes, whether we like it or not, have impact on the geology. We have these floods themselves have impact on the hydrology and hydrogeology. And as such, when we are designing the foundations for our buildings, foundations for our um, houses and big structures, we must take into account these dynamics. These dynamics throws a challenge to the engineering hydrogeologist or engineering geologist to up the games to know that there is need to evolve the techniques to meet these challenges because of these changes that we experience in the environment due to the natural occurrences and we need to be very much aware of these changes and to respond to them with appropriate measures because of um, the fact that um, the recommendations that we need to give to the engineers will depend on facts that it is not what they assumed in the past, but that the dynamics will have to cause them to adjust their designs and their practices. For instance, what an engineer might think might be the mixture of um, cement to sand Will, and with maybe the strength of the iron he might use for reinforcement was based on the knowledge that he had 10 years ago will not be the same today because there are changes in the environment. So we, I believe that this gathering will afford us opportunities to look critically at such changes and to see how we can adapt and evolve the science of engineering. Thank you and have a nice meeting. Thank you very much, sir, and sincere apologies. Professor P.D. Shekolo is still the Director of Technical Services of HYPRE. A round of applause for him. I'd like to let you know that we have a slight change in the program which is uh, before you. And hence, right now, I'm going to invite the Chairman, Technical Committee, who is also our teacher, Professor Samuel Olobani, to present the conference communique to His Excellency, the Governor of the State. He will, however, read the communique first. I must let you know that yesterday we had a panel discussion where different intellectuals and practitioners did indicate and talk about the issue of sustainability of structures. And hence, this communique will be read and later presented to His Excellency before we move to the award of fellowship to, to His Excellency, the Governor of the State. Professor Olobani, sir. Thank you. All established protocols duly observed. 
communique of the third regional congress of the international association for engineering geology and the environment and the seventh annual international conference of the nigerian association for engineering geology and the environment NIGE, held between the 9th and 14th of october 2022 at the Sheraton Hotels, Lagos. The president of the Nigerian Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment, Naege, Dr. Waliu Kayode Adeolu, and the vice president of Africa of the International Association for Engineering, Geology and the Environment, Professor TKS Abba, jointly convened the seventh Naege Annual International Conference and the Third Regional Congress of IA. The conference was held between the 9th and 14th day of October as a physical meeting with participants from all over the African continent. The 2022 annual international event focused on the team engineering geology imperative for infrastructural development and sustainability of cities in Africa has seven lead papers and 50 technical presentations covering the following conference of teams. One, building collapse, the nexus between geology, foundation, and suitability and structural stability. Two, geohazards, infrastructural stability and environmental sustainability. Three, advances and innovation in soil and rock characterization. Four, Geophysics, subsurface engineering, geological mapping, and characterization. Five, engineering geological mapping for sustainable infrastructure. The IA, I, IAEG and NAEG conference noted with concern the increasing frequency of building collapse and failures of roads and related infrastructure, and recommended an urgent review of the relevant codes recognizing the diversity in geological settings, subsurface conditions and climatic conditions across the country. Participants equally noted the current issues of climate change and its attendant effects in the episodes of flash floods and incre increase in the pore pressure across geological formations, leading to increased incidence of building failures, road failures, and failures of other civil engineering st structures deep concern over evolving on ethical practices and non-involvement of relevant geological and engineering geological expertise in subsurface and material testing for projects from the initial stages were reached. The conference also stressed the invaluable importance of geological and geoengineering so so soil investigation as prerequisite for building sustainable cities in Africa. This will include proper planning in the pre-construction stages in the development of structures. Infrastructure projects with proper input from professionals in geosciences to achieve environmental sustainability. The following key points were outlined during the presentation and subsequent panel discussions, as well as questions and answer sessions with several far-reaching recommendations. One, the collapses of many buildings and failures of roads, pavements, and other related structures in Nigeria, other parts of Africa, were linked to lack of adequate and comprehensive pre-construction subsoil investigation and adequate interpretation of results for application in design and construction, rather than the use of substandard materials only. The opinion of experts was that all infrastructural development Building, dams, roads, bridges, and tunnels should be preceded by pre construction engineering geological investigations. Three, infrastructural development in Africa should put into consideration the dynamic nature and effect of climate change on civil construction with measures put in place to mitigate both short and long term effects brought about by climate change. Four, pre-construction investigation for any structure must provide geological and geotechnical data 
alongside a subsurface model of a site with a view to understanding the nature of foundation soils and rocks. And five, underground space is largely unexplored around our continent and awareness of engineering geological applications to underground construction is needed. And subsurface soil, rock, and soil characterization in engineering geological investigation for underground construction is vital for dams and seismically prone areas, especially with rise in seismic city across the continent. Number six, geological structure including joints, faults, shear zones, and earth surface topography and geomorphology. Rivers, swamps must be evaluated and captured in pre-design stage to provide subsurface earth models, groundwater, and seismic conditions. Number seven, the opinion of experts was that standard environmental impact assessment, EIA, of proposed project development to form a tool for achieving sustainable development. And number eight, comprehensive engineering geological evaluation of naturally occurring construction materials such as lactic soil, sand, gravel, and quarry products was identified as prerequisite for sustainable structures. Nine, the advancement of sciences, especially the researches in the field of geosciences, should be linked to the society through proper legislative framework, bringing to the fore science and diplomacy. And number 10, the use of geophysics and other relevant geosciences as a sustainable tool in the area of ensuring proper pre-construction investigation was stretched. Thus, as policy recommendation, it is the opinion of the leadership of I, I, I and Naege that A, design of structures, especially buildings, roads, bridges, and dams should not apply only rules of tongue generalization in reports of engineering geological investigation of subsoil or rocks in site foundation investigation. B, site specific details of subsoil exploratory burning and engineering characterization key to design and construction of sustainable infrastructures should be provided for by competent geological consultants. A C, engineering geological geotechnical consultants separate from the civil engineer is recommended to play a key role on every civil engineering project in order to ensure that details of geological considerations are incorporated for sustainability of all infrastructures. D, legislation is the most important solution to all the identified problems. Building codes must be reviewed to consider the effects of climate change as well as the regulations of all civil engineering constructions. Arising from the above, listed policy recommendations. There is the need for the incorporation of a new code of practice and scale of fees of geological engineering consultants into construction projects, why government agencies and other professional bodies like Council for the Registration of Engineers in Nigeria, Koren, Architects Registration Council of Nigeria, ICON, and others should partner with the Council of Nigeria Mining Engineers and Geoscientists, COMET, for effective regulation and implementation of these policy recommendations. Naige Lagos dated the 10th of October 2022. I hand over this community to the president now for transmission to the government of Lagos State. The president. Sir. This is the communique of the 
third IAG Regional Congress and the seventh International Conference. Please, we ask you to study this and uh, make use of the recommendations. And we assure you that building collapse will be a thing of the past. Thank you, sir. I think our state deserves a better round of applause. Your Excellency, thank you very much. As I read each citation, until his emergence as the Executive Governor of Lagos State, His Excellency Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwo Olu was the Managing Director, CEO of the Lagos State Development Property Corporation, LSDPC. This achiever, an icon, was also a three-time commissioner in Lagos State. And we are not talking about just any portfolio. He served in the ministries of economic planning and budget. He also served in the commerce and industry zone and was also the commissioner in the ministry of establishment, training, and pensions. This distinguished personality is an alumnus of the prestigious Harvard Kennedy School of Government, is also an alumnus of the Lagos Business School, and he added the London Business School to it. He earned his first degree in surveying and geoinformatics and a Master of Business Administration from the University of Lagos. Great Akokite. He is a full member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management and he also boasts of membership of the Nigerian Institute of Directors, Chartered Institute of Personnel Management and is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development. Mr. Babajide Sawolu was a treasurer at former Lead Merchant Bank before moving to the United Bank for Africa as head of foreign money market. He subsequently moved to the First Inland Bank, now First City Monument Bank, where he retired as Deputy General Manager and Divisional Head. This golden fish, which has no hiding place, started his public service career in 2003 when he was appointed Special Advisor on Corporate Matters to the then Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Femi Pedro. He was later Special Advisor on Corporate Matters to the Executive Governor, His Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. For his outstanding performance, His Excellency, our Governor, was appointed Acting Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget in 2007, he became Commissioner for Commerce and Industry under Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinumbu. After the elections in 2007, he was appointed Commissioner for Establishment, Training and Pensions by Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola. His meritorious service to Lagos State continued and he was appointed as MDCEO of LSDPC in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me, in a very special way, with all sense of pride and humility, to introduce to you His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, the 15th Governor of Lagos State. I believe Our Excellency deserves a standing ovation. I'm going to invite the President of Naege to confer the Honorary Fellowship of our society on His Excellency Mr. Babajite 
Olusola sanwo olu By the powers conferred on me as the president of Nigerian Association for for Engineering Geology and the Environment I thereby award you Mr. Governor the honorary fellowship of the Nigerian Association for Engineering Geology and the Environment and the certificate you can from Sports address yourself as H. F. Naege. Congratulations, sir. A round of applause for our governor, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sawolu F. Naege. A round of applause for him. He has joined the League of Fellows of our great society, and we are indeed proud to be associated with him. Ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, I am so happy. I am so happy that Lagos State Government is doing all it can to ensure that things work. And you cannot get any other testimony from the big weights that you have here today. I was told by our colleagues who work in Lagos State that for the Honorable Commissioner Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development to be here representing His Excellency, then this is the number one event in Lagos State today. A round of applause for our Honorable Commissioner. I'm also aware that the Honorable Commissioner is doing all he can do to ensure that things work in the state. Sir, we are proud of you and God will continue to ease your task. Before I invite him to make his speech and declare this conference open, I'd like you to know that we also have with us the GM of La Sepa, that is the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency, Dr. Adedolako Fashawe, who is able represented by the Director of Service Charter, Mrs. Yemisi Kainde Ogundipe. Mrs. Yemisi Kainde Ogundipe. I don't know how they do it in Lagos. When you have the handsome guys, very handsome guys, as top guys, you also have very delectable, elegant Amazons. A round of applause for you, man. I'm delighted to invite His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, ably represented by the Honorable Commissioner, Ministry of Fiscal Planning, and urban development, engineer Tai Obangoshe Martins, to give the address of the special guest of honor and declare this conference open. As you are aware, I am, I am here at the instance under the directive of uh, our governor, Mr. Governor, Mr. Babaji Dirichola Sohulu. And therefore, I bring you good tidings felicitations and a lot of goodwill but then I am to read his uh, address but please allow me to say a few things before I go into his address because I've actually been sitting down there for quite some time and uh, there are just a few things that I would not allow to pass me by let me start first and foremost by appreciating Dr. Oyedirong, the anchor person. I 
and your guess is as good as mine why I'm appreciating him because even when I stepped into the hall the way he introduced Mr. Governor and the accolades he has been showering Mr. Governor with the way he has been almost advertising, publicizing <laughs> I mean I don't think we could have made even if we paid for it we, we couldn't have got it better than the way he has done it. and then again I do you know the interesting thing when you go somewhere to represent Mr. Governor, do you know sometimes it is always sweet, you know. It's always sweet because you get to experience a few of the things Mr. Governor enjoys when he, when he goes out. And um, if you are not careful, you tend to almost think that you are the governor. I stood up there and for a brief moment I almost forgot who I was. I had to remind myself come off it. For God's sake you are just thinking about what you might it. So in the same vein you know I have looked around the hall and I've seen that um, I checked out, especially my our colleagues here on the on the upper um, uh, floor here. And I noticed that everybody is wearing the ribbons and all that. And then suddenly I realized that I am the only one that is putting this thing on. And then it occurred to me that oh, definitely this must be for the governor. It's not for me. No wonder I've been putting it on, and I've had to be adjusting the. The thing because I mean, you can imagine now, I'm too small to enter the shoes of the governor. So if you would indulge me, you know, please, if you allow me to just take this thing off so that I can keep it, I don't want anything to happen to it. <laughs> I will make sure that I deliver that to Mr. Governor along with the shield and the certificate. I assure you, Mr. President, my president, that I will deliver your messages. And also yours, sir. I will deliver every message that you've asked me to give to Mr. Governor. Yeah. Um, and then, I want to go into this address. But I want to take a cue again from someone. But before I do that, do you know that when before coming here, I have always known that God Almighty is actually an engineer. I have always known that. That's my belief, and I've always known that. But today, I now realize that he's not just an engineer, but he's actually the geological engineer. And then let me take a cue from someone. I believe uh, it was you, sir. You got here and you said, for anywhere you see, I just know that it is not me. It is I. So anywhere you see, I say, I just know it's not me. It's Mr. Governor. The President Nigerian Association for Engineering, Geology and Environment, Dr. Karade Wali Wadeolu, FN. A E G E. The Vice President, International Association for Engineering, Geology, and the Environment, African Region, Professor T K S Abba. I know that I should recognize everyone here, especially our friend from South Africa and you, Madam, indeed. But allow me to move on to basically distinguished guests recognizing everyone in this hall but then it is important that I must recognize our own 
especially our general managers who are here present today from Lagos State. The general manager of the Lagos State uh, Fiscal Planning Authority, I recognize you, TPL Kendi Oshinaike. And the general manager, Lagos State Material Testing Laboratory, my colleague engineer, Engineer Lulade, including the representative of uh, the general manager of Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. Please, my regards to my sister. Distinguished members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join professionals and eminent scholars from across the globe who are gathered here this morning to discuss innovative developments in the built environment. I would like to use this opportunity to warmly welcome you all to Lagos, the center of excellence and state of aquatic splendor. The two-in-one conference tagged engineering geology imperative for infrastructural development and sustainability of cities in Africa is germane, especially in the face of the current challenges we are experiencing here in Lagos State. This conference is coming at such an auspicious time when we need the best minds in the field to proffer innovative and effective solutions to the issue of building collapse and flooding that we have experienced in Lagos. The importance of engineering geology in building a modern and sustainable society cannot be overemphasized, as it is the foundation process for any construction, and if done right, engenders confidence of the populace in all apparatus of government regarding their safety and security. It is especially critical in a fast developing mega city like ours, characterized by a small landmass with a growing population that is currently over 22 million. One of the promises we made to the good people of this great state is that we will make sure that we create the right environment in which security and safety of lives and property are guaranteed. We knew, we knew from the onset, we knew from the outset that we did not have the monopoly of knowledge with regards to finding the right solutions to the myriad challenges that we will be confronted with. And that is why we have consistently thrown our doors and ears open to diverse opinions and views from various sources. One of which is this body of intellectual and professional experts. As an administration, we have taken proactive measures to upgrade many agencies to meet with the new challenges we have experienced. For instance, we have repositioned the Lagos State Materials Testing Laboratory, which is an agency established and charged with the responsibility of carrying out geotechnics testing, all building and civil engineering materials for standard, including soil mechanics, subsoil investigation, aggregate, cement, water, and chemical test, test on concrete, blocks, and all other paraphernalia of construction. We have procured specialized testing equipment. And to improve the agency's reach, we also procured more operational vehicles and the construction of a satellite office in Opokomaiko is at an advanced stage and will become operational very soon. As a proactive approach, we have also engaged additional technical and non-technical consultants to facilitate the operations of the agency in the areas of carrying out non-destructive tests and serving of test notices as well as identifying distressed buildings for quick and appropriate intervention across the state. 
We are also constantly sensitizing all stakeholders in the industry against all forms of quackery in the sector. These are part of our administration's efforts, including the various infrastructural developments aimed at improving the livability index of our communities. I have no doubt that the papers that will be presented by the eminent and erudite presenters painstakingly assembled for this conference will beam the spotlight on other critical areas that needs to be focused upon to ensure that we reach our goal of building a sustainable and livable city driven by modern and efficient infrastructure in the critical sectors of our economy. On this note, I would like to congratulate and express my deep appreciation to the management of the International Association of Engineering Geology and the Nigerian Association of Engineering Geologists and the environment for organizing this conference at this very auspicious time. I urge you to keep in step with our administration by identifying areas of importance that will facilitate the growth of our dear state. On a final note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to declare the third International Association of Engineering Geology African Regional Congress and seventh Nigeria Association of Engineering Geology and the Environment Annual International Conference open. I'll invite the chairman, LOC of this conference, Professor Lukman Adioti, to render the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, for projecting the image of the association. Well, we are cockeyed to have many. The governor is an advocate. Greatest of the greatest of the greatest Akokite. Well, the governor, ably represented by the Commissioner of Fiscal Planning, that is Engineer Tayo Mangushi. I hope you are one of the Akokites. Greatest of the greatest of the greatest Akokite. With the permission of the Mr. President, let us stand on the existing problem. Let us say thank you to Almighty God for our convergence today. Because without God, nothing can be done. The Muslim will say, Alhamdulillah, God be But the Christian, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you is such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched, but it can be fed by our hearts. On that note, I want to thank uh, the Governor of Lagos State as our special guest of honor and an Akokite ably represented by an Akokite too, engineer Tayo Bangoshi Matis. Engineer Tayo Bangoshi Matis, the first time that I met him, that was a uh, few, maybe few weeks ago, when we had the conversation of uh, building collapse. Then he was uh, newly appointed as the commissioner for fiscal planning. Our president, for your information, we are part of the conversation. I'm talking about the building code. I'm the chairman of the section that is the design. And uh, my able president is equally part. And we are some members here. Thank you for allowing us to be part of the conversation. And I hope, sir, Mr. President, because uh, we have our colleagues here from uh, the ministry. Please, we want you to give them due recognition. 
We want you to give them due recognition because they can solve so many problems. Let me call it thank our dynamic president. You know, when Waliu came, sorry, Dr. Waliu came to our university a few years ago for his master. I spotted him. I know that this is going to be a great man. But today, it has been uh, indicated by projecting the image of our great association. You can see today's event is very unique in the history of our great association. I pray that Almighty God will bless you, will bless your ESCO, and equally, let me equally thank our Mabu Vice President, IEAG Africa. Is a passionate uh, man, a dynamic academician. That is uh, Dr. T.K. Ava. Pro sorry, Professor T.K. Ava. Almighty God will bless you and bless you abundantly. And now we call you have our past president here. I don't want to mention their name, but they know themselves. Almighty God will assist you because we their support. Our sister cannot move. Thank you very much, and God Almighty God bless you. Let me equally thank all our fellows that are here. There are many here, and to whom much is given, much is expected. Please, uh, Mr. President, uh, Governor, please, as a fellow, the fellow have been assisting the association, and I know all the advocates that I know, because our vice, let me tell you, the vice president, is an advocate, and we have another seven governors as advocates. So after this, something you can ask me. We normally perform and perform greatly. Mr. Uh, governor, sir, please, our association needs a lot of money. Let me tell you, I want to ask, when we are doing a normally like uh, our president assisted us a lot, the former governor, and likewise the president governor, and I wish that we are going to do the same thing for. Please pass the message across to the governor. Because Aquakite will spend money. And we are flashy everywhere we are. Please come and flash money on us. So let me thank also the host. That is uh, Lagos State Chapter. Led by Mr. Frank Equema. Thank you very much. If not because of Lagos State, they are the ones that make the environment happen for all of us. Because if the environment is not secured, there is nothing we can do. Thank you and God bless you. Now, a lot has been said about our sponsors. But let me appreciate them by quotation from two people all over the world. They are great men. And the first quotation is that. That is by Duke and Faith. He said, you can show appreciation in big and little ways. It is often little things that can really count. And we had up to his table. Loving and mutually beneficial relationship. God bless you. Number two, by Lama. The fruit of goodness lies in the appreciation to goodness. On that note, I will appreciate all of them. And led by Planet Project Limited. He gave us, let me mention it now so that we can encourage others. He gave us a sum of three million. Do you know why? <coughs> the governor cannot give us anything less than that. Too. At least, if it cannot be three times that, it should be four times that, or five times, or 15 times. I know that we are able in Lagos. We are able in Lagos to do that. Please, equally pass the best to Mr. Governor. God bless you. And likewise, let me thank all the chapter chairmen. They are wonderful people. Without their support, nothing can be done. Because uh, we move and we work uh, as a team. God bless all of you. The next is uh, LOC, Local Organizing Committee, shared by me. My name is uh, Professor Lumon Adilti. And we have uh, the secretary, is, uh, Dr. Ata Fakeye. <coughs> Let me say, Mr. Governor, it's not out of place if you can recommend because we are sensitive of gender. I hope that one of these 
in the future is going to be a commissioner, probably in the US. Or something higher than that, or a minister. So he's been very, he's, he's very active. And uh, Almighty God, he decided on several occasions just to get results. And if you get results, and this part of the result today, Dr. Atafake, thank you. Though I call you, I can disagree with you, but that is my so just bless so. so thank you very much. And other members, we have Tenika. The chairman of Tenika is uh, Professor Bani. Please, all the chairmen should stand up for recognition, please. All the chairmen, by the power conferred on me, by the president, all the chairmen, they have to stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. And in addition, all other members, can you simply stand up for recognition? All other members, not, yes, our fellows, stand up for recognition. The next is, uh, thank you very much, uh, the MC of the Mr. Sorry, Dr. Ibrahim. Oh, you know. Ah, I enjoy it today. He got to a point I was, I was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> passing from one place to another. And that was equally testified by our our amiable governor, able to represented by. Well, keep on the good work. Because, uh, you know, I don't know how anybody can do better than what you have done today. You really advertise us. Not only that, by extension, you advertise Lagos State. And you know we are going to, and I don't hide my feeling. I don't hide my feeling. I'm a member of EPC. I don't have my feeling. And by special grace of God, I'm saying it here, based on the power of Convado, me, Tinubu, by special, because you are in Lagos, it's going to be the next president. So, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim, Tinubu is going to find something for you. <laughs> so, once again, let me appreciate everybody. All our members, all our friends, and the way we shall. We are all wonderful. Because if you are organizing these beautiful events, without your president, what are you going to do? But when you get to, let me tell you something that happened to my brother when, so my brother invited, uh, had a, uh, somebody had a party. Because he didn't leave that place, uh, he, he, he has not been coming home. But eventually what happened? Nobody came for the party. Ah, he said he prepared this, he prepared this, he prepared this, he prepared this. But nobody eventually, and he now left. But without your presence, we invited you, and you are here today. Please, let us congratulate ourselves. And on that note, let me round up by thanking Almighty God again. Because uh, I, after this, we are going to start, uh, and without God, nothing can be done. So thank you, God. And I know that uh, the conference is going to be very eventful. And uh, at the end of the day, because we have a conference, we want a conference to solve the problem. And by special grace of God, sir, the building collapse will be seen of the past after this event. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you very much, Chairman LOC, Professor Lukman Adioti. A round of applause for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we love you. Thank you for all you're doing. We appreciate you. We are full of immense gratitude. Only God can appreciate you much more. Already established protocol. My name is Olufunsho Elulade and I'm the general manager at Lagos State Material Testing Laboratory. And the topic of the lead paper before me this afternoon is titled Foundation and Structural Stability Test, an effective remedy for building collapse. Before I go into the uh, presentation, I'm sure you would agree with me. You would agree with me that you would agree with me that without a building, then or an infrastructure, then. There is nothing called collapse. I'm giving this definition in the built environment. Next slide, please. Yeah, as you can see, the definition of a building 
because this um, presentation is time bound and I don't have so much time so I will try as much as possible to to be as fast as I can because you know like uh, the MC right list uh, the anchor of the program I should have been in uh, Betsy today because today they are discussing the built environment of which my agency is key so I will try my best to wrap up things and you can see the definition of a uh, building which we all know you know an enclosed structure you know a shelter you know for man and his environment and you can also define a building as a structure that has been coupled together it can be made of wood steel block and so on and so forth next slide please next slide please i want to give this presentation by defining the key components of this paper then we will not go into the into the discussion of the paper properly and what do we time as foundation the lowest part of any building or civil structure that has or that is in that has indirect contact with that is in direct contact with the soil which transfer load from the structure to the soil safely and of course we have different types of foundation but predominantly you have two key types of foundation classification and that's either shallow or deep and there are lots of examples of shallow and deep uh, foundation and you can see that's an example of a shallow foundation which is a raft foundation you know I, and you can see material testing there trying to collect samples and make sure the materials used are of uh, quality next slide please and you can see an example of you know, a deep foundation, which is the pile foundation. You can see all the reinforcements stacking up. And of course, why is it a pile foundation? You use a pile foundation, but anyway, scientifically, you use the pile foundation where the soil strata is bad, especially where you don't have that cohesiveness. Then, you use a power foundation when you want to build a skyscraper, anything above maybe five, six story and above. So those are the two classifications of foundation. It's either shallow or deep. Next slide. Please. Now, if you look at the topic, foundation and structural stability, what we term by structural stability. What is the you know, we define what a structure is, a building structure. We define what foundation is. And what is structural stability? A lot of definitions you can you know you can deduce. But mostly what concerns us is that ability of any building structure to withstand its dead load is dynamic load and external forces. For example, if you want to say a structure is stable, either the way you have designed it against wind, wind force, the dead load, even the imposed load as well. If you can withstand all this, then you can say the structure is stable. Or the resistance offered by a structure to undesirable movement like you know sliding, collapsing, and so on and so forth. That means the ability to maintain an equilibrium. You know, especially when you have a wind force on a skyscraper, the ability for that force to be able to maintain that building without its collapsing. And what is the structural test? You know, it's a test conducted to determine the strength of any building or civil engineering infrastructure through quality, you know, assurance method. I want to take Lagos State as a case study. And of course, 
This is a study done by Olasukome Abib Okwala. He was a visiting scientist to Lagos then. And, you know, he's from the United Nations University Institute of uh, Environment and Human Security. Over 20 years, of course, we have witnessed a lot of building collapse. And make no mistake, we will still be witnessing collapses. Because you have to ask yourself a question. Before the establishment of Lagos State Material Testing Laboratory in April 2006, we had lots of buildings which had been built through quackery by armed professionals and so on and so forth. So what the government of today is doing is to catch up to make sure almost all the buildings in Lagos are tested. And I'm going to get there. You know. So the anecdote evidence will that about two hundred and twenty one collapsed, you know, from nineteen seventy four to twenty nineteen from the study. And of course in Nigeria and more than half of that occurred in Lagos. And when you look at it again, 176 of that 221 happened between 2000 and 2021 in Lagos. There are lots of collapses that has not been reported because perhaps maybe it wasn't significant. Maybe it was just a partial collapse, but still a collapse. And of course, you can see the statistics, 78.4% residential, 12.8% commercial, approximately 9% institutional building, and you know, a lot of people were displaced. And you can see the estimated loss in terms of finances, about $3.2 trillion worth of property were lost. Next slide, please. And you can see the graph. This is from Lagos State um, Fire Service. You can see from 2000 to 2001, the way buildings were collapsing in Lagos State. You know, I'll make sure the slide is available, you know, so you can contact the association. So if you need a copy. Next slide, please. And you can see again, because we need to talk about the components of any building structure that is critical to building collapse. And it's very glaring from this graph that if the foundation is not properly designed for or constructed, that is the recipe for disaster. You, you, in fact, it may collapse before you even get to the roof. And that is why this association is really, really important. And that is why the government of today is ready to partner with this association. Because you are the first person from the conception of any project, geoscientists, you know, geotechnical engineers and stuff, geotechnical engineers and stuff. Because you will be the one that will give a structural engineer what that ground says for him to be able to design the right foundation. And that's why you see it's so key. Then, to collapse, you know, columns carries weight and transfer it to the foundation. It takes the weight from the slab, both the dead and the post, distribute it through the beams, the beams distribute it through the column, and the column takes it to the, to the foundation. I can see that's why it's about 24%. And when you talk about causes of building collapse, there are two predominant you know, causes. If it's not artificial, which is man-made per se, it has to be natural. And you can see, I don't want to belabor us, if you under the artificial factors, you have soil with less bearing capacity, you know, you have poor design and construction. You have use of substandard and untested local materials. And this is where counterfeiters come in and, you know, quackery. And you have engagement of non-professionals, which I've mentioned earlier. 
absence of site investigation, foundation failure, and structural instability of the building. Next slide, please. And if you look at natural causes, earthquakes, landslide, hurricane, rainstorm, wind with high speed, volcanicity, and subsidence. There is no collapse that happens in any building or any civil infrastructure that is out of these factors. It has to be one of them. But the one that is controllable and avoidable, the man-made or the artificial. Because, see, the natural one is act of God, first major. There's nothing you can do about it. But once a building is designed correctly, then you have taken care of any natural occurrence. Because in the developed world, when they build skyscrapers now, you will find out that they take earthquake factors into consideration. So that if there is any earthquake, the building will be designed in a flexible way to be able to adjust itself and not too rigid for it to cause collapse. You know. And of course, the foundation is key. It has the highest, as you have seen in that uh, bar chart. So I and being the topic, you know, foundation failure. You can see why a foundation will definitely fail. Is that a poor soil condition, poor breeding site and ground penetration, weather, transpiration, plumbing leaks, poor design, and so on. My apologies for the two plumbing leaks. You know, it's a, it was a typo. Next slide, please. And of course, we are going to structural because we want to talk about structural and foundation. So if we talk about four types of structural failure, you have the compressive, you have the tensor, the bending, and the buckling, which I'm going to explain later. Next slide. I want to be as fast as possible. And again, cause of structural failure, because those are the two key uh, elements of this presentation. You have, you know, the use of substandard uh, material, weak structure, you know, structural deterioration, poor and inadequate design, poor material, you know, distress, for instance, fire, because sometimes when you have fire that happens to a particular building structure, sometimes the, the components used to construct it would have deteriorated as a result of the fire. So, you know, very poor communication amongst all the professionals on site. You will find out that a structural engineer doesn't want to talk to a civil engineer or a builder or a, geo a geologist who has given them a recommendation, okay, of what they should build on that site. Yeah, next slide, please. Now, what is a foundation test? You know, this is your forte. I don't think I can know anything foundation test more than this association. Because I'm neither a geologist or a geotechnic engineer. I'm a civil engineer and a project manager. So you would agree with me that all the things listed here makes foundation test. This refers to the soil test conducted pre-construction to determine the suitability of the soil for the type of foundation to be recommended. And this is where you guys come in. The test is also done to determine the presence of groundwater. You know, the design of the foundation is based on the test report, which I was saying earlier. When you guys do or conduct a test, it is your recommendation. Any designer must use to design the foundation. Any negation from your recommendation, there is probability it will lead to collapse. And that is why your profession is so key to the livelihood of man and its environment. Then you see you have the test that most foundation tests are destructive in nature. There is no way you have to disturb the samples, regardless of what. And some tests are conducted at the construction sites, while others are done in the lab. And few tests that are constructed on site 
you have the SPT, I mean, standard penetration test, you know, you have cone penetration test, a lot, a lot of tests that are done on site, pile, and so on and so forth. And, you know, the types of foundation tests that I've mentioned, you have the plate load, venture test, pressure meter test, Dutch cone, a lot of tests, you know, to mention but few. Next slide. And the laboratory tests, you know, you pick samples from site and predominantly, you know, you use it to determine maybe the bearing capacity of the soil or the specific gravity or, you know, the moisture content or the plasticity of any soil in order to know what parameters you, the structural engineers will use to design, you know, the, the uh, building. And you see moisture, can you go back please? Moisture content, specific gravity, dry density, atabag, sieve analysis, water or chemical test, you know, to determine the pH or the salinity, you know, because water is key. Without water, there is no construction. You have to understand that. Because water, without water, and that's why most building fail. You don't know the kind of water you are using. If the salinity is high, so there is tendency that even your cement corrodes, your reinforcement corrodes, and as a result, it weakens that component, and it will lead to failure. Next slide, please. Now, what is structural test, which is termed structural integrity? And when you say structural integrity, you are talking about the, the components, especially the structural components that makes a building, which is column, slab, you know, and so on and so forth. You are testing the monolithic, you know, cohesion of those components, whether they can still withstand the test of time, you know, and you can read this an engineering field that helps to ensure that either structural, either structure or structural components is fit for purpose under normal operational condition. That the structure is safe should condition exceed that of the original design. This includes supporting its own weight, aiming to prevent deformation, breakage, or any catastrophe. Next slide, please. Now, purpose of structural integrity test, of course, to save, first and foremost, to save human life and properties. Then, to understand the condition of the building. Because most structural integrity tests are done after a building has been completed. And what the legal state is doing presently, I'm changing the law because the existing law of material testing does not address the current realities on ground. And in addition to that, the incessant collapse happening in Lagos are rampant. So we need to compel people. We need to force them to get their buildings or properties tested. So by the time the House of Assembly passes the law and it becomes operational, don't be surprised. We will just come to your house and pick a house. And presently, like the governor said, you know, he has approved engagement of you know technical and non-technical consultants. What technical consultant does, they go and only build the other distress or fine, they go and test it on our behalf. Non-technical, we want to have a lot of reach as fast as possible to prevent collapse happening in Lagos. So the purpose to comply with statutory requirements which I've just mentioned, to find difficult critical areas to repair immediately, and to enhance building life cycle by suggesting preventive and corrective measure like repairs or retrofitting. Next slide, please. And you have two types of structural integrity test. You have the destructive and non-destructive. Next slide, please. Of course, the destructive includes any sample you have taken that you need to distort to achieve a result. Then that is destructive. 
then non-destructive is what is called non-destructive test NDT the specialized equipment that you use to carry that out you know and when you say destructive you are talking about for example you are talking about concrete you know you want to do a trial mix for a particular you know uh, element so you bring a concrete cube and it will be crushed to determine the compressive strength of that mix and it goes to your steel reinforcement as well you know to test the the yield you know the te tensile strength till it gets to yield point and so on and so forth you know and of course chemical literature to determine their composition as well next slide please that's an example of uh, compression machine that does you know the crushing of the cube and automatically records the result next slide please and of course that's the steel machine you know that pulls the reinforcement to test the um, the tensile components and of course like i said i don't have to go over it again i've already defined what a non-destructive test is yeah next slide yeah this is a key equipment used for non-destructive test you have the Pundit uh, machine and Profoscope. And you can see beside it, you have all those transducers which actually you put on any of the uh, elements, structural elements, and it uses wave velocity and transfers it to the machine. And the machine will determine what component or what compressive strength or, you know, that it gives. And Likewise, the one beside it is called Profoscope. Once you put it or place it anywhere in the building, especially where you have reinforcement, it tells you the size, it tells you the spacing, and it tells you, you know, what sort of uh, reinforcement. Either tensile reinforcement or normal reinforcement. Yeah, next slide, please. And of course, you can see what I've been saying. Foundation and stability tests are very important in ensuring the building does not collapse. Carrying out foundation tests on the site before or after construction can help prevent failure and stop collapse of building in the nearest future. It helps to know the bearing capacity of the soil and how the foundation can be built in that area. Next slide. And the structural test check, if the building is stable or strong enough to support its own weight, it helps to determine where maintenance or repairs is needed in a building to ensure the building longevity. Together, both tests are very important as they significantly reduces the risk of building either as a result of collapse, either as a result of foundation failure or construction material failure. Thank you. Any question? Let my Thank you. Engineer, thank you very much. I deal with you every week. Take the whole spot. I'm going to fire with many questions. No, no, don't worry. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. You see, I'm so impressed with what you've done. And what impressed me most is the statement you made. You must do solid investigation before you do foundation design. That's the condition. Tell me, 2014. Soil vary from meter to meter. This condition was what I got November 6, 1976, at McGill University by Professor Raymond Young. Our first course was soil, soil mechanics. When he came to the class, he was a black man. He said, so it's very from meter to meter. I'm not forgetting that. Except you have done soil investigation, you cannot, never predict or subject for the short time. When I'm called to go and do any job, I first do soil investigation. 
after the stone conversion, you now look at the profile, the log. From the log, just like a doctor's x-ray, from that log, you cannot see the type of soil profile you have, the depth, the thickness of the various layers, whether it's suitable layer or unsuitable layer. When you have done that, you can now decide on the type of foundation. You have hit the nail on the head. That is what, that's why the is coming. That's why we're indispensable. We're indispensable in every building. building. I'm happy that the Apollo University, just like I said here, by the time you finish this one, you know here building corrupt that much, except those who went behind at night to do foundation. Now, when you have done that, you cannot decide on the type of foundation. You mentioned raft. Good. Raft is floating foundation. And that name for raft is floating foundation. It floats. It doesn't float. In short, when I, I'm tempted with that in a short time and I don't have time, I told my client, go for raft. But there are cases in the Niger Delta where raft is not even suitable. In the case of LNG, January, February 2021, a house almost one kilometer long, where LNG has built $2 million, built. And they attempted to leave the country and go to the Hague to look for somebody. Somebody to 